Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the Legion topics that interests me the most and that is, oddly enough, not the Burning Legion, it is in fact the Titans. They tie into a whole bunch of stuff which is what makes them so bloody cool. Plus, we haven't actually had a chance to meet them yet in person. With them being such a large cosmic force, it also stands to reason that, perhaps given some of the content of this expansion, we might close it off having a far more direct link to the Titans than we currently do. So if you'd like a lore geek out about one of the coolest things that could happen in Legion and one of the cooler bits of the overall Warcraft lore, then hey, stick around. So if there ever was an expansion to introduce the Titans, it's pretty much Legion. The Burning Legion are their most significant enemy as far as we know, and both players and Legion forces are going to be having a cheeky little dick around with the Pillars of Creation. The Pillars of Creation are a Titan device that was quite literally used to create, or at the very least shape, the planet, and we're going to be using that to seal off whatever Legion, like, portal or whatever. They're also named after the real-life Pillars of Creation, by the way, which are these massive dust clouds in the Eagle Nebula that were left over after a supernova about 6,000 years ago that are actually going to disappear sometime in the near-ish future, and by near future I mean long after we're all dead. Anyway, back to the lore. So, the Titans don't leave the places that they touch dormant. Instead, they leave Watchers such as Loken and the crew from Ulduar, and they also have numerous fail-safes and automated devices. The most notable of these is probably the whole thing that almost killed everyone on the planet, and that is Algalon and the Hulls of Origination in the Celestial Pal Planetarium inside Ulduar. So, the events of Ulduar called him down to the planet, and his analysis found that the world was infected with Old God corruption, beyond repair. It is in the universe's best interest to re-originate this planet should my analysis find systemic corruption. Do not interfere. And that it was in the universe's best interest to re-originate, i.e. destroy, the entire planet by using the artifact that is basically Oldham, as, like, as in the, the entire zone may as well just be a big bomb. One of his quotes is that regardless of the outcome of the encounter with him, the Pantheon will hear his message, implying that at the time of Wrath of the Lich King, the Pantheon is still in existence. Now, after the fight with Algalon, he has some talk about re-examining his view on life and free will and things like that, and he said that he changes the signal of the reply code so that it doesn't trigger the device and kill everyone. Entire Planetary systems born and raised in the time that it takes your mortal hearts to beat once. Yet all throughout, my own heart devoid of emotion, of empathy, I have felt nothing. Million lives wasted. Had they all held within them your tenacity? Had they all loved life as you do? Perhaps it is your imperfection, that which grants you free will, that allows you to persevere against all cosmically calculated odds. You prevail where the Titan's own perfect creations have failed. I've rearranged the reply code. Your planet will be spared. I cannot be certain of my own calculations anymore. Find a place of power close to the skies. And uh, we then hop over to Dalaran and send it off. By the way, that big light in the sky that you see whenever Ronan gives his big speech, that is quite literally the, rep uh, the reply code that you're sending back. Now, does that reply code just go to the Hulls of Origination, tell it not to fire, or does it, as Algalon would suggest, end up hitting the Pantheon? That's definitely a very interesting question, and from all of this, I think it's pretty likely that the Pantheon knows what's up with our world in terms of some of the slightly more recent events. With the Pillars of Creation being such a monumentally powerful device, it's almost certain that the Titans will have loads of things monitoring them, including Watchers, and likely something that would call down an Algalone-like being, plus loads of constructs and automated defenses and things like that. That place is probably wired up as shit because it's really important. So when we land on the Broken Isles, we're going to be fiddling around with what's presumably one of their most powerful artifacts on the planet, and fending off their greatest enemy. The Broken Shore introduction is also apparently where we halt the initial Legion threat, though it would seem that it's going to be at the loss of loads of people on our side, which makes a good deal of sense. Now that fight to survive against all the odds is exactly what, technically in terms of the story, we showed Algalon. Had they all held within them your tenacity? Had they all loved life as you do? That allows you to persevere against all cosmically calculated odds. 
Um, so assuming he didn't lie in what he relayed in that reply code, then we're going to give the Titans further proof that we're really good. So essentially, we will be gallivanting around the pillars of creation, we'll be throwing up loads of, you know, trip switches, triggering fail safes, but at the same time proving that uh, we're actually really pretty badass and very good at killing things. Now, the narrative is getting to the stage where players are fighting some of the largest forces in the known universe. This invasion is supposed to be the largest of any, and it's right off the back of us beating Archimonde back to the nether. Technically, we killed him in the nether, but uh, hey, narrative sense be damned. Blizzard also hinted that Azeroth is a planet of special importance. The Titans chose to imprison the old gods rather than destroy the planet, which is a bit odd. Um, the Burning Legion um, also has a very special interest in this planet. Algalon himself has actually reoriginated many planets, and, you know, he quite literally was the Herald of Destruction for countless, countless civilizations. But we were the only ones who were able to make him rethink, i.e. defeat him in a fight. I would hazard a guess that there is more to our planet than we know, and players has basically succeeded over Algalon, where, in terms of the lore, countless civilizations failed. That does make us pretty powerful on a cosmic scale, and everyone on a cosmic scale is very interested in our planet. Hell, apparently even the, um, the space-faring multi-planet old gods, if some speculations are to be believed, are interested in our planet as well. So what does all of this establish? Well, we're some of the most powerful mortal beings in existence in terms of the canon. Certainly, we are more powerful than the countless, countless civilizations that Algalon destroys. Azeroth is probably also highly important, and we um, seem to be some of the only people who are capable of holding back the Titan's principal enemy. If whatever we accomplish at the end of this Broken Shore thing doesn't impress them enough, then potentially killing the, um, the expansion's final boss probably will. I think it'll be the Avatar of Sagaris, but it could also be Kil'jaeden or maybe a weaker sort of mid-summoning Sagaris, a bit like what they did with Kil'jaeden in the Sunwell. Anyway, all of this points to Azeroth being super important and us essentially proving ourselves to the Titans as being beings that are very capable of fending off their main enemy, which makes us useful to them. So will they return? Well, it seems quite inevitable. And with Legion, Blizzard is giving more than enough plot reasons to actually make that happen. It would also, I think, be a, an expansion idea that's very different from most of what we've seen, and that would absolutely be very welcome. Another speculation is that the Pantheon has somehow fallen. We know Sagaris fell to whatever darkness, so it's not impossible that the rest of them could. So the Titans could end up being at war both with themselves and the Burning Legion. With things looking very bleak, who the hell are they going to turn to to aid? Apparently, we're some of the most powerful beings in the galaxy. Um, if, you know, all this stuff is to be believed, so it makes sense they would turn to us. Now, regardless of the specifics, I think it's almost a certainty that the Titans are going to play more of a part in the Warcraft universe's cosmic story, so we're almost definitely going to see them. Another fun connection that's floating around is that between the Vrykul and Titans. The Broken Shore is home to a sect of pure blood, Vrykul or whatever, who essentially are just, like, not affiliated with the Scourge. These Vrykul worship the Titans, and from what we know, their main seat of power is the Halls of Valor, which Blizzard essentially said is Valhalla. Now, they are being very overt with their Norse sort of, um, you know, pantheon references here, which means we can probably delve a little bit into actual folklore. So the Aesir are the group of beings who form nearly all of the Norse pantheon. For an example, Odin is an Aesir. The Vanir are a bit different. Some of the Vanir essentially serve as the pantheon, but they're not Aesir in terms of the actual folklore, though I'm probably way oversimplifying that. Anyway, in World of Warcraft, the Aesir are the platinum-colored titans who are in control of the skies and are responsible for things like, say, the storm giants, while the Vanir are the bronze ones who control the earth. Now, with these Vrykul being up in the skies, it makes sense that they worship the Aesir. Now, I've got no idea how the Vrykul would even make a floating sitting themselves, and uh, that's, that's probably something to do with the Titans. And as another tidbit, the rune magic that the Vrykuls use is of Titan origin. All of this points to another connection to the Titans in this expansion, and clearly this Hulls of Valor thing... Well, if it's a floating thing in the sky, it's got to have something to do with the Titans. Maybe we'll find a big artifact in there. Certainly, Blizzard have a very big sort of, you know, thing to use there in terms of giving us a bit of Titan lore that's really cool. So, in fact, when you think about it, every threat comes back to the Titans. The Burning Legion are their main enemy. The Vrykul worship a sect of them, so 
that, that's another very big link. The Naga are serving the Old Gods, who are another one of the Titans' enemies, again, likely on a cosmic scale. Everything in Legion points to the Titans, eventually, and of course, we're digging around with the Pillars of Creation, which are what they use to make planets, which I assume is something that's decently powerful. Now, that's really about it for this video. I just thought it would be fun to speculate a bit about the Titans because they're really cool. I'm definitely going to do more lore videos because they're actually pretty fun to write and just talk about, which is great. And Legion's lore is certainly cracking up to be a hell of a lot more important than Warlords of Draenor's, but of course, only time will tell. Anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any thoughts, feelings, opinions, or questions, leave them down in the comments or on my Twitter. That's probably the best place to get me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.